Oh, it stopped on you? Ah, it's fine, it's fine. I just gotta record this. Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome and thank you for coming to the April version of the Golang Meetup. Yep, and uh, as usual, the so the current version is uh, 1.12, so always not yet. 1.13 is gonna be released at uh, August. Yes, you're the apparently you're the bleeding edge person. So salute to you. Yep. Thanks for that testing. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for that. And thank you, Muda. Uh, actually, mainly uh, like King Liang is the person who arranged this for for us and uh, brought up all the food. Thank you very much. So uh, let's proceed. I uh, um, I'm gonna follow the format of uh, DevSoft Meetup because the format is so good. So we're gonna start with the bus corner. So, uh, so for latest in the news, yes, 1.1, 1 1.13 is coming soon, and they are introducing a new way to handle uh, errors. So previously, error types are actually strings uh, wrapped in the interface. So the problem with that is uh, a lot of the time, when you have a uh, certain thing like certain error contain a specific message like uh, key one is not accurate. Uh, uh, key one. Uh, it's not found something like that then if you try to do a comparison you you cannot do a comparison right because you need when you like you cannot compare against a key x it's not found right so uh, what it does is introduce a new um, um, string directive it's called a per the percent s for string normally it's percent w so you can do a comparison with uh, errors with uh, that contains a value so uh, it's an improvement that is going to come in the 1.13, which is scheduled to release around August. And if you want to experience it before beforehand, you are free to check it out. Uh, the cursor is a bit annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, free to check it out. This uh, you can start using it. And um, because um, this feature is still not very well tested, and they want more people to test it out. Before release, because uh, Golang always uh, the one of the promise of Golang is uh, it tries to maintain backward compatibility, so you can always upgrade to the latest version without worry. Zoom in, you you can see. Yeah, what's wrong with that? <laughs> what's wrong with that? It's fine. Okay. Uh. <laughs> so KD one release uh, with a new license. Uh, not. Not so much. It's just uh, with a uh, more clearer licensing. Uh, yeah. So is it still free or no? It's still free. Okay. Free as in free data rate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. KD is a HTTP server. Mm -hmm. uh, something that is uh, you can want to say is an alternative to nginx, mm -hmm. but it is written in GoLang. And one of the killer, yeah, one of the killer feature of uh, KD is uh, it comes with less encrypt. So less encrypt. So if you use it, you you get you handle the less encrypt for you automatically. And also renew for you. Yep, renew for you. Yep. And there's a lot of uh, modules and stuff you can customize. Greater in GoLang. Mm -hmm. So Jingo, uh, latest on the news as well, it's a very fast uh, JSON encoder. Uh, it's not that it's um, the standard library one is not usable, but the standard library one is uh, considerably pretty slow. So if you do uh, a bit of profiling or benchmarking, which I'm gonna cover uh, profiling afterwards, you see that um, the the default JSON encoder is pretty slow. Mm -hmm. It's trying to do things correctly, but to do things correctly, uh, you are losing up some performance. So these are the third party implementation. They are very fast. Yeah, check them out. Uh, and an overview of goals to to like this is actually a blog post where they I'm gonna share these slides afterwards. It's actually on GitHub. So. Um, I'm gonna say it afterwards. Um, this is actually a, a a page where they cover a few of the very good onboarding tools that uh, for for beginners or for the experienced one to rediscover certain things that you you need for to to use Go. Some of the helpers that help you out and things. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, it's it's pretty good. Yeah, check it out. So and uh. I think early this month, um, April. It's not related to Go, but 
uh, the local pack is actually released. So this is one of the logo. So check it out. Uh, if you would like to use some of the very fun logo that it has, uh, I'm going to go sidetrack a bit. Show you guys. Yeah, while waiting for it. Yep. So I will be proceeding to the talk. So yeah, you get all these uh, funny gophers, yeah, twenty one stickers. Take yep. Money. Yeah, check it out. Um, <laughs> yeah, print it out. Uh, if you are you are if you are planning to print it some out, uh, ping me and I will assign as well. Um, so now uh, this is actually a recycle talk as you can see here in two thousand seventeen. I did it once, uh, in Santo. Uh, at that time the attendance. Uh, without counting the the several uh, organizer the attendees were only two person <laughs> so i'm gonna recycle it um it's a quick guide all these are actually quick introduction i'm not going too deep into it yet if you guys want more uh probably next month we're gonna do it again so also uh for some that people that follow me on facebook i'm doing if on request um yeah not <laughs> not just game <laughs> but uh on wednesday i try to stream a certain topic about golang so will be if you like would like to have some like go length onboarding some beginning tips and stuff i prefer them to be a screencast get you let you get used to go and the meetup will be a bit on the intermediate to advanced topic so uh so uh this is a quick guide uh, it's actually a quick preview into uh go profiling very short uh does any, everybody knows what uh, profiling is so a bit of uh, just uh, introduction. Profiling means uh, to to pick into the running process to see that uh, normally the CPU or the memory uh, what are causing the more usage of the CPU and memory of a system that uh, you take up uh, pick up from or you when you were designing the software or testing it you didn't know that it might give you a performance big performance impact during production something like that. So. Uh, this is a quote from Simon, Simon Payton Jones, which is uh, the author of uh, Haskell, but not related. So, <laughs> so it's uh, the quote I'm gonna read it out. The most depressing thing about life as a programmer is if you're faced with a chunk of code that either someone else wrote or worse, you wrote yourself, but no longer dare to modify. So one thing about profiling is that if you, let's say, unfortunately have to pick up some projects, not just let's say Go length, but uh, in general, if and could actually performs very badly and you have a time constraint where you cannot rewrite everything but you have to fix the performance issues and that's where profiling came from so you have to pick into the service so uh, so assume this is this is a code uh, I have a black box program let's see let's say that uh, I actually inherited this from some programmer that left the company but it's a very simple program that you see obviously there's a functioning waste cycle that you waste you a lot of CPU <laughs> cycle but uh, actually uh, I didn't know that it's actually causing me that kind of issue so I received a black box program so I didn't know which one is going to cause me issues so how to use uh, profiling the profiler is actually included into the standard library so um, uh, you don't need to install a third party tool for, to do profiling in Golang. And in Golang, because Golang seems 1.5, uh, right now the version is 1.12. So you know that 1.5 is a pretty long period. So uh, Golang, since 1.5s are rewritten from scratch to be solely on Golang. So everything is in Golang. The good thing about that is if you do debugging or profiling, you can understand everything because everything is in Golang. So, and this is actually a, a, a way, like it's, it's not actually a way that we're gonna use often, but uh, this, by this, by, by importing this package, you actually inject into the standard uh, HTTP uh, handler so that you actually start up, automatically start up a profiler that you can profile remotely. So uh, there are some ways to uh, save the profile into a into a static file but that is for a, a what you call it a, a program that runs only once execute and finish but you know that program that runs like script that 
finish its jobs after it's done, it's not, not much of a big deal. So a lot of the issues are running processes. So this provides us a very good tool to pick into what happened. So for ha what happened uh, for CPU, uh, of course, I'm going to start the server at, if you notice, I actually have already a HTTP server. So I have some I have some endpoints that just print OK and hello world. So uh, to use them, I uh, let me put this up. So uh, don't get offended by the year of the talk, 2017, because nobody is there to listen to me. <laughs> so so uh, I have this program called. Uh, it's a program called, it's a, actually a slug because it's slow, so it's a program that looks like this. Uh, let, me, let me make it smaller. So uh, I don't know about the code at all. So I'm going to start the process, slug, it was not main. Hmm? Huh? This one? Display? It's a, it's a, it's a Rust program called BAT. Uh, no, it's a Rust. Yeah. So uh, let me call the endpoint. I'm going to use curl because the browser is very lag. <laughs> so uh, let's just do it properly. So I'm going to call what endpoints do I have? Sorry, bad memory. <laughs> so I have a health call. So it gonna give, give me an okay. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna request. Oh, this is very slow. Yeah, this is this is a very bad endpoint, right? That seems like doesn't give me anything. Oh, hello world, just what? How many seconds for just a hello world? Uh, let me pull up the while we're waiting. Let me pull up the CPU profiler as well. So for this. Uh, this is actually the main. Well, okay. This is actually a main command. Go to pprof. Then, uh, if you have a file, then you provide the file here. If you have a remote profiler endpoint, then you just put your remote profiler endpoint here. So what? Uh, Ten seconds just for a hello world. That's terrible. So uh, so let run it again. This is uh to get the CPU profile. So it's gonna collect some stats. Uh, CPU profile requires your program to be running in order to get it. Memory, unlike memory, memory is already there. So if you run the memory, it will be very fast, which I'm gonna demonstrate afterwards. So how much is the, how much is the, the So, okay, so now we are in the profiler. To get more, uh, you actually have a help, uh, but I'm gonna show you the very useful command that you use, no, Top, we will display the top processes. Top, if you don't want to have a top five, you top five. So um, then you have a cumulative option come. That uh, just go to help and you give you the the information. So so there are some mainly a lot of exports like SVG format. So if you see main function. I have something at here. Wait cycle. So and I have a AVG. Oh, SVG. No. Okay. So the profiler will generate you if you like. If you prefer to be more look more have a graphical person, it will show you the the trees, the chain of uh, of uh, what the core stacks, so so of what uh, you can go through. Like these are not the stuff we can manage. Also, we go through here. Oh, this one is the biggest spender, waste cycle. So apparently, it's uh, trying to grow some slice that takes up some memory and stuff. And also, this is moving the memory around. So let's check it out. So. Heat map? Uh, frame graph. Frame graph. Uh, I don't think this one has a frame graph. But uh, frame graph is actually another 
that's another thing I think it's not here so I'm gonna list main waste cycle I can see the code so you display here that this is see of nice this is a this function actually wasted me nine seconds and at here it waited for three seconds this is a cumulative function and here it took me five second five point four three seconds to do all this so it, it means that this actually took up a significant portion of this whole thing took up a significant portion of my CPU cycle so uh, I'm not going to cover context yet. Uh, there will be another topic which uh, also covered, but nobody attend. <laughs> uh, it was in the early days of uh, Meetup. So, uh, so here we're going to get into the code. Uh, I'm going to boot up. Uh, where's my? So here we know that waste cycle at and at li line for forty six and fifty we have some issues. Even the terminal is slow, slow down because I'm uh, code. I use I use Emacs. Mm. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> what? Reserve your judgment. Get out if you don't like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very slow as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm actually uh, recording, recording and streaming and screen capturing at the same time while well, having a Docker. Yeah. No, not that. That is because of the. So we have this. This is a function. Oh, we have. We finally know. Assume that we didn't know that there's something very obvious called waste cycle. We know that waste cycle actually wastes a lot of our CPU here. So what it does is it just keep appending stuff into a slice. So that is why in the graph here, the growth slice, and it's got moving the memory around. But in the in here, you see very obvious where where all the CPU CPU cycles went. So yep, and I'm not gonna fix this first because I'm gonna run. I'm going to run the. Let me t let me close this tab. Quick guide. Okay. Hmm? Uh, it's actually GraphVis. Uh, requires GraphVis to construct. But the profiler actually has the. If you have GraphVis installed, you actually use GraphVis to export into the whatever graph you prefer. Hmm? Yeah. Um. I mean, prof. Uh, not exporting the SVG. SVG you need GraphVis. The go. Pro P prof actually use oh, graphics to add. Yeah. Prof. Oh, yeah. Profile, the oh, the normal profile. Yeah, you can, but uh, you have something that understand Go code here. Yeah. So and unlike you can use it because uh, GoLang compiles to a uh, a GD GDB uh, compatible uh, object, so you can use GDB to to profile your application, oh. but you have. Since you have a profiler that understands the goal code, so you, you can see like that's why it can accurately display you which line of goal code things are. Yeah. And uh, the one of the downside is that if you read the recent uh, blog about why the Golang binary is so bad, so, so big, it's ex actually it includes the debugging symbol in the production uh, binary also. So. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Rust is, I don't know. That, that much about us. I thought Rust is small. Okay. So, so, so this is before because you yeah. can strip it. Yeah. yeah, you can strip it. You you can strip it. For Rust you can strip. Yeah, you can strip it. You can strip it, but uh there's only that much you can strip. And also tips, uh go if you do a go build, you use this to do a strip. Uh, LD flex dash S dash W. Don't use the strip command to strip it. If you build this, this will remove Certain part and this uh this will try to strip it as we strip the blue if you we remove some of the debugging symbol. Uh, I don't know. I don't use that much. <laughs> you can use it as variables as well. But uh, this one will produce you a smaller binary if you care about. But the debugging symbol will still be there. Okay. Uh, 
so you cannot exactly strip all of it. And a bit of off-topic also, you can actually access the IR, the intermediate uh, representing, oh, yeah. Client yeah, not client, it's actually Golang IR. Oh, you have yeah, if you are really concerned, I, I actually, that can be another topic <laughs> in myself, but you can actually see the, it's not uh, assembly, but the IR, the Golang, generated by the Golang compiler, to s if you're really concerned into like, which one is uh, going into like wasting more cycle and stuff. So this will show you where things go wrong, like very useful running server. I'm gonna stop this and run the memory again. Hit. You see, this is very fast because memory is always a. Uh, oh, okay. Wrong. I gotta. Do I have to? Okay. Let me start the server again. Waste a bit more cycles. So now I have something, see, wasted so much memory. So a uh, very useful thing like this, but for more, you can check out, I'm gonna, I'm, uh, for more, uh, these are the main commands that you have. So for some things might be familiar for you. So top is most of the time is uh, useful enough. Uh, web list, these are, we will show you a web. If you don't like to read on the terminal, so these are the secondary argument for the argument. So if I want to top again, cumulative means of all. See, usual, you see this again. And I'm gonna list that again, that again, cycle. And you can see, oh, this one, for that short period of time, it's actually allocating 100 meg of memory already. Of because for no apparent reason. <laughs> uh, programming probably testing something there and left it there for and it'll be it'll be running in production and waste you cycle. So also so the measure the yeah. yeah it gives you a light yep. So let's say you do a data structure on the same yeah. right? So it's a measure the memory usage of yeah. that object at that point of time. Yep. That point of time. Do you this for the allocation stack will be gone directly. Stack is after the function. Yeah. No, uh, I don't think stack is an issue here because stack it will be gone. Uh, okay, so that's another mm. random question. So this is, okay, so let's say this. Uh, this would be at the yep. end of the function. Yep. And, and in the, GC, in the, just a bit of a, a sidetrack about that is a Golang, uh, cer only certain data types when it exceeded the stack size, then you go to the heap okay. and if you guys don't know when you go to the heap, it has to be garbage collected, mm -hmm. which will, and also when you do that kind of uh, allocate memory allocation, it will be slower. Uh, when garbage collection hits, it will be slower as well. So there are actually ways to do, uh, uh, like let's say proper string concatenation without having to, to have an allocation, like uh, use the bu buffer IO instead of, uh, instead of uh, concatenate using the plus symbol directly, something like that. And something you can control here is uh, for a slice or an array-like uh, data structure, you can have a, you can have a, what you call it, pre-allocated buffer, something like that, no? if you want to avoid having to do that much of an allocation. Because what happens here is every single time, especially when it expands, you try, you create a new, new array within. So, yeah. However, this is a, uh, so you guys know where the problem is, so assume that I solve it. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, uh, just, just for the sake of uh, full flow, I'm gonna just comment this. So I'm gonna run the slug again, to a code. Oh, it's not running, oh. Because uh, Golang always doesn't like you to declare a variable without using it. So the cheat is either you keep it here, uh, not so good. If way is <laughs> you can use it to cheat, but uh, don't don't use it, don't abuse it. It's just for you to do easy debugging or easy checkout. Yeah. Yeah. You because you are like you are assign you are copying this to uh, nothing. Yeah, but I. Let, let's see, I just want to temporarily disable that. Uh, 
And I don't want to edit, I don't want to modify this code. So assume that I just, see, comparing to that, I, I just delete this file, right? if I don't like it. So I'm going to call it, oh, it's very fast now. So let's have a look. Oh, yeah, OK. This top, top cumulative, oh, nothing. What? No allocation? This is outrageous. <laughs> let's try again. <laughs> let's call it more. <laughs> Too, too fast. Uh, it will not get an issue. What? The, you can fire the programmer. <laughs> you, okay. So you're going to fetch. Uh, as usual, you know the answer already, which is uh, nothing much going on. So um, this is a very quick glimpse into profiling. Mm -hmm. But I hope you guys have more questions afterwards, like what sort of things, uh, what you call it, topic that go into like uh, just now what, what was the question again King, uh, Zoo asked me about like the reflect package and you talk about what is it oh, flame graph is also one thing data structure yeah oh data structure oh data structure that uh, he, that goes to the stack allocation or heap allocation those can be some of the topic but this will hopefully this will gauge your interest in like seeing the, the performance and stuff what's your own for hmm? Um, not much unless you run it. You just uh, you just uh, have to pre. It just do a bit of allocation for that chunk of memory or the file. If you write the profile profiling file to a C, um, to a file, then it's a I the I O overhead lah. Save the profile. You have to save it. Right now, it's the current profile. This is the current profile, but you can have it. Uh, check out the pprof, the the profiling, uh, Golang profiling. There's actually a web. I'm gonna cover it afterwards, but I'm gonna show you. There's actually a blog post about it as well, uh, from the official document. This is, so this is the blog post. Uh, check it out. 2011, but because Golang doesn't change as much over the years, so the documentation still matters, still makes sense. Right? <laughs> uh, there are other ways to do things like you can save your profiler to a file and stuff so if let's say you're not running a long running process like a server right you can save them into a file but uh well i'm not going to cover that i'm going to just just show you a quick how quick way to there's something built into that just use it but so uh this thing but why tests also uh you can also profile your test during your test as well. However, uh, my point uh, is profiling is most likely when you had something that you didn't anticipate, you didn't know where the costs are, and or probably when you need to fix a problem that somebody wrote that you don't have much knowledge of. But you can always preemptively solve it by doing a test and benchmark. And there's a feature for for Golang test called benchmark. I'm gonna show afterwards as well. Just just one simple uh, example. So this is uh, I'm gonna just open the file. I have a question. Can you profile something inside the Zoom Yeah, why not? Go to go routine. Yeah, it's just a program. That's just a function. Uh, no, it's not intercepting. It's uh, right now. It's not intercepting. It's uh, it's providing the profile. It's providing the profiling information via HTTP. Mm -hmm. So, if you 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 get the profiles of everything. But uh, I think this actually I should explain this, because I'm starting a web server, and I have something that that do this. But also I also inject this. It doesn't mean that this only works. On HTTP, this profiling thing. If I do a, if I do a go, let's say go. Uh, for loop indefinitely, let's say again something like this. Uh, let's say uh, slice equal. Uh, let's say string empty one. If I do this again, it will pick it up as well. It's just 
a profiling when you do this you inject the the availability of the profiling symbol mm -hmm. uh, okay into HTTP access for or else you have to do the normal way of saving that into a, a file like here or else you have to save it to a file so it just uh, expose your profiler into as a HTTP la, that you can access everywhere but also be careful I don't just simply expose your your this this endpoint or this debugging endpoints into the public you can uh, better if you start it as a separate uh, endpoint you can have a uh, several more ports running at the same time no no uh, compile flag but not feature flag uh, just compile flag, uh, just like this. Uh, let's say build something, then only for release, something like this. Uh, it's not the exact word, I actually forgot that, I don't use that often, but it start with something like this. Uh, no, it's what, what, what part of the name? Uh, no, it's not, it can be outside here. Yes, as far as I know, I don't know. I don't know. Like right questions, I should have to try it out. Yeah. I'm gonna try it out. So that will be another screencast <laughs> mm -hmm. of how it works exactly. So uh, by using this, actually, uh, when I first learned Go, it actually saved me a lot of uh, heartache, not just headache. <laughs> uh, during like why certain things are leaking memory and stuff so, or something that I did wrong most likely related to IO right? because IO is not something we have control about sometimes mm -hmm. so this is how you start a benchmark like a test start, a test actually start with a capitalized test benchmark actually start with a benchmark so actually I save it as a see the test file underscore test this is actually a standard for Golang so so for this I actually uh, the com uh, above the convention, uh, I can have uh, another detail about how to do the testing and benchmark. These are very can be really deep deep topics into Golang itself. See, not much about uh, other libraries, but uh, on how it, how the inner working is. I just basically run it. So uh, this is a convention for the benchmark. Level. So here I'm gonna run it, which I forgot. <laughs> Nowadays I actually forgot most of the stuff I actually do. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you. <laughs> so, uh, when you do a test, you you by default it's a bench. Bench mem if you want to benchmark the memory as well. Mm -hmm. And here, if you want to save the profiler into a file, so you can analyze them afterward. So I can run them. Oh, oh, because of that thing, not enough argument. Fine. I because I updated the file a bit. So let's update that. Uh, where's my editor? See, I'm behaving like a a, a person who forgot where I am. <laughs> yeah. Very slow. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, because uh, oh, also because it's been a while since I used the uh, used Emacs, and it actually has a lot of errors about the plugins that I need to use. So it's actually failing to load some of my libraries. Yeah, I, I actually be, I'm actually converted to VS Code. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm not updating the plugin. I should give you the Emacs config. Yeah. No, no, I got the Emacs config. I just need to update it. <laughs> so, so uh, context. So I have something like context. So uh, fine. I'm gonna have a. Okay. So context. Uh, I forgot. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I actually forgot. Yeah. Sorry, folks. Huh? Which one? This one. This one. The one you see here. These columns. Uh, 
the memory, the percentage, huh? Percentage of that current that, that current snapshot of the profile. So it actually takes up hundred percent of it. The allocation of the amount of allocation happened. Yep. You want to yeah? This is actually exactly the the core sequence as well. So uh, remember here I. I started uh, for this. Uh, no, no. Uh, you need to repeat that. <laughs> so that one just shows yep. the memory consumption. Yep. What if I want to see which process? Process is, you mean CPU? Which one is CPU? It's not sending the CPU back. CPU is actually two. There are two profiles. This is. For the memory, it's heap. For for the CPU, it's the CPU. CPU is uh, the profile. So this is the CPU cycle. So how much C how much CPU time you took? This is also from the same profile. No, uh, from the same. Uh, not it's actually a different endpoint. So you see, pprof, uh, using the same command, uh -huh. but different endpoint. This is the profiler. This is a CPU profiler. And then the other one is. It's the heap. It's the heap profile. Oh. There are actually more, but I uh, don't want to cover that much into that yet. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna share the slides afterwards, like check it out yourself. <laughs> uh, and also the good thing is uh this slide is actually powered by powered by present. So you can you you don't access the raw file that I have, you can see it the same way on the web. So I I forgot the endpoint again, so ah uh, it's doesn't matter. <laughs> I forgot a lot of stuff recently. Yeah. <laughs> so um yeah, let's run it. Uh, something like this. You gotta wait for it to finish. So this is uh, the memory combination that is set. Huh? It's you try to run as much during the uh, during the period of the benchmark. So it's like okay, you so stop. N second, then run as much as possible. Yeah, as much as possible. That's why the loop is actually determined by the profiler. Okay. Yeah, the the, the benchmark. Okay. So. If you can write small functions so you can benchmark them easily, else sometimes things can happen. Then use profiler. So oh. here's a hypothetical scenario. Can we reuse the Unix X code and this time? No, it's different. Code. It's a different. It's two different types. It's two different types. Okay. But your it's about mainly your function testable function should be like small enough. That with something that in and out doesn't do doesn't do global uh, access and stuff. Okay, so the short answer is it's two different codes, but we should argue. Oh, this one I don't get it. Yeah. Okay. So this is the link. I should update this. It's no longer around. I should wrote a blog, but I don't know. It's a markdown, but I can find it out somewhere. I think that's that's how it works. Okay. <laughs> so shit bonus. What are the bonus? <laughs> I forgot this was from did. <laughs> I forgot the bonus. Sorry, folks. Yep. No benchmark are benchmark because uh, if you can see tests are just testing whether it works the in and out the input and the output. But benchmark codes looks like looks differently. No, it's not the same. Benchmark codes has a. Uh, Something that the benchmarker control, like how much, how many times it can run and stuff. So, uh, getting very slow because I'm running, running the benchmark now. So the benchmarker actually has this. They, you have the this input, unlike the test, and you have. You see, this is actually the boilerplate. La. You run as much as it can, and it's actually interactive oh, with the benchmarker. Well. Uh, yeah, the you can no, you can write other. Because there is, this is not the only way to write the benchmark. There are actually several more utilities that is provided by this. You just run once. Run once, it's not a benchmark. Because, because, benchmark because no, because uh, this one, you have to specify what sort of benchmark it is. Sometimes it's parallel, sometimes it's, it's not just, the, the testing B doesn't just provide one thing for you. It provides a lot more functionality for you. There are some parallel tests, uh, things that test. Uh, several more, but I only use N and parallel. Uh, what is the use case of parallel? 
parallel is a good routine and stuff. Uh, whether they, they can run nicely parallelly. So you will test your uh, view, uh, web app view here. Mm. Uh, you can say s some, but race conditions should be detected by test. If, if you things, uh, if the result is a boolean, that's a test. So yes, the per the perform or not test. Uh, race condition or not test. Benchmark is the numbers. How how many how many times I can run it within a minute something like that. That is a benchmark. A boolean is a test. If you expect a boolean, a test. So test only do yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. <laughs> oh, so finish it. <laughs> do, do you have any examples of uh, uh, the concurrency in that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm a very terrible presenter. Uh, go lang. <laughs> Benchmark. <laughs> Oh, but this works. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. To support me, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, it's something that I'm, I, 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 I don't do. These are the stuff that I don't do that often. So. <laughs> Something like this. Oh my goodness, that's real life scenario. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay, yep. so uh, there are a lot more stuff like the DB has actually a lot okay. something like run parallel is it timer also. There are some but I didn't use that them that much. Uh mostly I just use the normal benchmark, which is the M test. The benchmark is the throughput. <laughs> <laughs> the benchmark is the throughput. The the, the, web, the web server. Yeah, that's the benchmark. That's yeah, it will be there. I just need to uh uh in case it's not finished yet, uh, it's not finished yet. It will actually look like this. The benchmark benchmark result will look like this. This is how many times it runs during the test. Uh, this is the, the time per, per operation. There's actually, mem in memory, they will actually show you the allocation uh, here. Yeah, because uh, this one is not, I have to find the, the one with the memory. Good question. Uh, memory. Eric, uh, I also did. I also did a very uh, high quality recording of Eric's uh, tutorial on, into GoLang, high performance tutorial into GoLang. You guys can. Ac I actually will share the link. It's also actually on YouTube. It's uh, uh, he. I think he did it four or five times already over several years, but that was the time that I had the best recording of him doing that. So that is very nice. He showed actually all the in depth details, and that meetup. Uh, lasted from 7 p.m. to almost 11 something. Wow. Just about memory allocation. <laughs> so yeah. So I that's why I, I don't want to cover this in here. <laughs> yeah. I'll I'll show that. <coughs> he showed that. He showed everything. He showed. He showed. He that's how you know about allocation. That's only the that's the only way you know about the allocation. So I'm gonna stop this. Uh. Probably I'll do it again next time. <laughs> huh? Which one? His video is on YouTube right now. So I you you go to Engineers My channel and look for it, but I'll post it as well. So uh that actually concludes one part of it. Hopefully this is useful. Profiler is already there, use it. I forgot what's the bonus. <laughs> so uh, By the way, you left out that go key. Oh. What? Go key. What is that? The language server. Oh, it's out. Yeah. I didn't know because the current one stuck. Yeah, <laughs> it's finally mm. out. Like yeah. it's still in beta form.
Yo, what okay. Oh, <laughs> Let, I'm gonna gradually switch it back. <laughs> so, uh, uh, before we are too late, okay, nine. So, we have until nine thirty. But I suppose to wrap up actually at nine. But I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna do it fast. Actually, I'm doing two talks today. <laughs> Very quick glimpse, also a short introduction, uh, mainly as a teaser for you guys to get more into it first. Then I, if you guys would like to see it, I'll do a in depth probably an hour or two about just the, this topic alone. Metrics profile is about what is going on inside your process. Metrics is called what some some people call uh it's a white box monitoring. Unlike black box, black box is like um uh, log passing, like uh, nginx log passing. You 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 are processing a data from something that was there previously that you didn't write, you don't have access into. Uh, metrics is something that you hook into your own code. So metrics are stuff that you write into your code, like uh, I want to know how long it takes uh, for this file to be processed within my own process. So this actually involves a third party, but uh, and also this is a very hot topic nowadays, SIE, Site Reliability Engineering. If you want to know the rely, this is actually a free book as well. Uh, if you want to read online, you can buy them. Uh, two books, read the original one, and the, the workbook is actually the case study. So very, you can see like how other people do this and what is SRE. And uh, metrics is um, very closely related to SRE because uh, SRE is uh, something like closed loop, kind of a fast change and fast update, fast fix uh, uh, way of doing engineering. So read it up, then you can see relation of why do you need metrics. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the ping time, also uh, the satisfaction, which I'll cover a bit afterwards, just the query. So, response time, yeah. uh, round trip, DNS, uh, those things like, uh, uh, if some people who are in the loop, they might have heard of tracing. Tracing is actually uh, getting into the details is like a, it's like the marriage between metrics and profiler. So metrics is just to getting get the number and you actually put it into your logic. You you put the logic in there like log this, increment this by one every single time a user log in something like that. But uh, tracing means that uh, for a lot of microservices, I don't know where everything goes. I need to go where they are and. I have a hope to go into there to see what actually happened. So uh, that is a topic that I'm not going to cover. All this uh, doesn't come in free. All these metrics and you know, they they will they will come they will give you uh, overhead and the logging also uh, metrics actually involve uh, I think most people heard about it time series database and time series database is, is bloody huge. So yep and they are not exactly free. Just use as whatever that you actually feel you needed to. So uh, it's uh, what I actually cover, the white box versus black box. Um, metrics is actually white box. So what's the difference which I cover a bit, okay. So stats, by default, Golang, if you don't want to use any third party uh, application, by default, it has a package. Also magically, importing this will expose your server set, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is from Google. They call it wa Wazi format. If you read, uh, if you read the SI book, then you see like uh, it's actually everything from Google. Their, their practices. So uh, just gonna start a bit of a process, which I'm gonna. Uh, also, and because uh, I don't want to offend people that are older for me because of a, a bit of age and stuff. I to avoid confusion, I'm gonna just. Uh, <laughs> Just delete all the tabs, <laughs> so, so I won't be confused <laughs> which tabs I should be on. So I actually wrote a bit of code. So right, xbar. So how what xbar looks like is actually this, a simple program that actually, uh, instead of uh, magically relying on importing to in inject my 
my into my handler because sometimes I might have different server myself. So right now I'm using the handler. Handler is actually a inter HTTP interface in Golang. So you actually expose it at was fuzzy uh, or is it in this? Oh, okay, I need this. No, not this. Oh, okay, this one. So I'm gonna run it again. So X was very black magic. Uh, if you just find if you want that, also do not expose it to the public. <laughs> you get everything, like your CPU allocation, everything here, mailogs and stuff. So if you want to like write a parser to it, you can actually write a parser. See, keep in use all this internal information. So I guess like most of the metrics library like. like yep. Hook. They hook into this. So that uh, if you use, uh, I'm what I'm covering is Prometheus. Prome Prometheus is actually a tool developed in SoundCloud originally, but the developers were actually from Google developing for Botmon. Botmon is the monitoring for the Bob cluster. Bob cluster is actually a Google cluster, internal cluster. Prometheus monitoring. Yep, Prometheus. Uh, what I'm covering is Prometheus. Okay. It's not the movie. <laughs> 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 yep, Prometheus. And Prometheus is a nicer, more economic ways of using this. This is this is so much harder to, to understand. Prometheus basically means like Grafana Yep, Grafana, yep. Yeah. So I'm gonna cover a bit Grafana. Yeah. <laughs> so time series database they relies on or the, there are different uh Prometheus TS DB, TS is time series, there are TS there are influx DB as well. So all this actually works with Grafana. So but they work in a different way. So how a time series, I'm gonna do a bit of time series because metrics are closely related to time series. How a time series entry look like, this is the name of the entry, so CPO. So these are like the, the column names. So why do we put this kind of column names is for like the group by. Law. So if you, if you don't want like CPO, give me the average of this, give me the median of this, then I get a, a, no, a, a, a mean of this, and then I get an average of 100%. But if you want to group by server A, then, then you get the server A. So this is a this is a from InfluxDB documentation. This is a table like the table. So also for swimming, this is like the table. These are the columns information metadata for you to do a group by. So this is the value. These are the values, so not just one value, but sometimes more than one value. So time series and introducing Prometheus. It's a very quick introduction. I, I use Prometheus a lot, but uh, there's a time constraint, so I'm gonna do it fast. This is a short guide also because I'm supposed to cover too. How does it work? So, uh, Prometheus um, data entry, unlike that, look like this. And if you read the SI book, this is this is exactly what Bogmon looks like. Bogmon, uh, Bogmon, B O R G. The, the profiler, the, the, the metrics for the Google's uh, monitoring. So those engineers came out and did Prometheus. So that's, that's why the book matters a lot, not just Google related. A lot of the terminology and stuff are very closely related to here. And let me start a server. I actually have a server for everything. That's why it's slows because I'm starting a Prometheus and a Grafana in the background. So run uh, metrics. Okay, I'm gonna run a requester also that do a bit of mock request for me. So I'm gonna show you the code. It's a very simple program. Uh, nothing much on the request, but metrics is actually look like this. It might be a bit small. So I have two endpoints, I have another endpoint. So, and also as usual, do not simply expose this to the public. And these are my definition of, uh, I have, a, I have uh, to explain a bit, this is a simple one. This is a random number. These are the buckets for me to do uh, quantile analysis. Uh, it's it gonna move into a bit of statistics and stuff. Uh, this, this program is basically just observing a random float. So I'm gonna show you the endpoint first. So my endpoint is nothing. I have a push, I have a pull, I have a matrix. But uh, in production, I actually start this as 
as another port for internal Prometheus. And this is how the Prometheus data look like. Metrics. More readable than this. And also, of course, Prometheus itself is a scraper and also it's a query engine. So I'm going to start because I have a Prometheus engine running already. Oh, not this. Did I start it? Please tell me I started it. Stop. Oh, 1990. See, I forgot a lot, especially during live demonstration. <laughs> so, uh, it has its own DSL of um, doing configuration. So, let me show you. This is like a job. So which endpoint is gonna do like every five seconds? Do please in production do not do five seconds scrape, because five seconds scrape means that you have a lot of data. Your time series will get very big. So uh, normally uh, thirty seconds for me is okay enough. It's already very fine grained and the database is very huge, <laughs> especially when you're hosting stuff on the cloud. Cloud storage is very expensive. <laughs> so this is my endpoint. Five seconds is well, it's not bad. It's that you create a lot of entries, which you take up a lot of space. And when you try to analyze it, it will be very heavy for the engine to analyze, try to analyze all this because you try to try to uh, aggregate all of them. So yeah, yeah. No, like let's say, uh, go back to the slide here. Why is it down? Okay. So like going back here, these are the this is the quantile uh, uh, calculation. This is actually a command. You actually do this to get the 59 percentile of the of uh, this doesn't make sense, but this is the this is the request now. So what are the response time within 95 percentile? So if you have a lot of data but your changes doesn't, let's say your traffic is not so big, you create a lot of entry for no reason. So for no good reason, it just wastes you a lot. The, your time to database you get really big. How big it is is like it's like for me one month of uh, thirty second scrape of just one service is over ten G. Yeah. I mean for one service with a lot of other stuff. Uh, it's ten G, so it's crazy just for one service. So it keeps everything inside the cloud. Uh, yep. Uh, no. Uh, for me, I I still use it use the TSDB provided, uh -huh. which is stored as a text file. But Prometheus actually support multiple data backend, which is like InfluxDB. Yeah. But uh, you can set, uh, the, that is why also, uh, which I'm supposed to cover afterwards, is a matrix is supposed to give you fast and, fast and uh, approximate uh, view into how the system perform right now. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it is unlike, it, is, it doesn't replace log parsing and stuff because log parsing and stuff are, are slow afterwards, but they are very accurate. So and um, because of this, normally when we we when we store when we store data as a time series database, we have a decay rate. So it means that uh, we probably just keep it for two months or something like that. We don't keep it for long, or either we write another engine to compress it. It doesn't make sense to store it in the long run. And uh, the main thing about metrics is it gives you the view into what happened now, not not like I want it uh, two months later. I want like what happened last time. It's supposed to help you solve things down. So, uh, why is it down? Okay. Uh, restart Prometheus. Okay. The app is running now. Let's start again. This is the Prometheus engine on its own. Uh, by itself, the by itself, the implementation is very simple. Prometheus is a database engine, query engine, and also the scraper. Mm -hmm. So that is why you need to you need to expose this uh, internally. You need to expose it somewhere uh, so that uh, in certain interviews, uh, Prometheus will scrape this and pass it and store it into the DB. But there is actually another option called push if you cannot have you cannot afford to have something exposed at all. But that is, uh, I usually don't use that, that that much. And of course it comes with overhead also uh, because your, now your service has to maintain this. Uh, for, for this uh, naive way of using it, you just 
uh, update the current now. Probably this is great because it's time series, the data change. So time when you do analysis, then you check the changes. But for for the server, it's very it's considering it's not free, but it's pretty lightweight enough because it just shows what happened now. It just shows this much. It doesn't need to keep track of what happened before and after. It's already now. You know. So let's see if it works. As usual, when you try to do demo, things will fail. <laughs> I don't know. I need to sacrifice swimming. <laughs> I don't know what happened. But I should. <laughs> A lot of things fail today for me. Okay. No, it's not running out of memory. It's, it's uh, let me check. No, special. Damn, man. <laughs> SL. Huh? SL. Ah. You know the SL package off topic while well, I'm trying to fix this? That's a top, uh, because sometimes we, we type LS, we type SL, right? There's actually a package in Linux. I'm not sure if they're still around. <laughs> when you type SL, you do a random deletion of your files. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm not sure if it's still around. Though. <laughs> so, yeah. So that will train your what well, it your finesse of your your typing finesse. Come on, I just free oh okay. It's up. <laughs> I don't know what happened. P. I just repeated it. I just restarted everything. Uh, no, this is uh, Prometheus the container. Docker is the con uh, Prometheus the container. Because I have to prepare it beforehand to show you guys. So, so this is a uh, you can serve as an uptime monitoring as, as well. So, for a simple Go program like just now, uh, ignore the alerts. I'm not using Prometheus as an alert because I'm using Grafana as a nicer UI. So it exposes all these stats for you. So like uptime. But only display you now. It only give you now. So unless you have yeah. because I we have more than oh. So okay. Let's run this again. No, no data point found. Okay. Uh, oh. oh okay. Ah uh, I just I just reset it. So I'm gonna get an uptime. This is a very simple one that we use. Everybody like their uptime because uh, nowadays uptime doesn't make sense anymore. Last time when we do monitoring, we say, oh, check the uptime of this endpoint and things. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't represent the health of the endpoint. It doesn't say that, oh, it's up, but it's uh, giving you a response for one minute, like taking, so, uh, so this is that. And I'm gonna copy and paste. That's why I prepared the slide because I'm gonna copy and paste some of them. So like uh, for this program of this, for the 95 percentile, uh, that ha you guys have to study yourself for, for now. For a 99, 95 percentile, you get this like 0 0.23, but you see the median might be different. So that's, that is why we also don't use average because a lot of time if, we, if you do a simple, more like check this endpoint, the request is this, if you do a if you do a mean, it doesn't represent anything because sometimes client has hiccup or something happened like I O like void the database hiccup. So what? That's why you need the percentile to give you like better visibility. Like fifty over fifty percent of the distribution runs at within this is a second. This is a one hundred millisecond. So ninety percentile. Uh, just a very quick uh, introduction into that. Ninety percentile is this. So this is like what people, uh, some, some services, the SLA are like 99, 99.9, for five. So you can see like 99 is uh, 247, but 99.9 .9 is might be different. See, that's how you do a percent. So some people say uh, 69, <laughs> 69 is how, see, it's closer to one, uh, but one is the mean. Uh. So uh, in the situation, uh, off topic a bit, why does that matter? Uh, again, is uh, you have you have one, you have nine one, but you have one eleven because so to make it easy because uh, ten will be nineteen. So if you have you have uh, ten one, your average 
will be, or your mean will be one. But if you have nine one and one and one eleven, uh, like let's you you get a div if you do a mean, you get a how how much it you get a two. No, you get a one point shit. I try it. See, I didn't I didn't even know how to do it arithmetic anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I get it, I get yeah. the idea. 20, yeah, you get a 2. But it doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that uh, you have, you see most of the distribution, 9 of them and 1, 11. But most of the, them, most of the requests are finished within 1. If there's only one outlier, there's 11. But if you get the mean, which is the average, you get 2. But it doesn't make sense. So if you take the 90 percentile, you get 1. And you know that something must be happening with something there. So you have a certain correlation of uh, whether the service can perform or not. So uh, uh, for some, uh, this is almost impossible for us. For me, like 95 is pretty good enough. So okay. So this is actually a very interesting one. So basically, all of these commands are Prometheus commands. Com Prometheus command. Yeah. Uh, you have to learn the DSL, unfortunately. If you like uh, InfluxDB, you can directly hook Prometheus into InfluxDB, so you store things as InfluxDB, so that you can use your InfluxDB query. Yeah. It's also a DB. It's a time system, but it can hook into, you can, you can support other backends. So, you, so because Prometheus is a query engine, and also a scraper, and also a DB. So you can choose to use, if you don't like the query engine, and not the DB, you can Put uh, you can use Prometheus to scrape Prometheus backend into InfluxDB. Or if you want to write yourself Graphite or whatever you prefer. And this is very interesting. This is one of the very important thing that might be new for some people. It's called AppTex. Anybody heard of it? It's called AppTex. This very complicated query. If you, you get a one or zero. AppTex is actually it's the full name is called this. Um, for more, go read about it. App text is measurement of user satisfaction. So let's say, like, let's say, like, uh, for most of the time, a very good experience. For a very good experience is within uh, 250, uh, 250 millisecond response time. Because it's a real world, people has toleration. Uh, service will degrade and stuff. What is the toleration? Whether so normally in AppTex you measure by four times you four times uh, the toleration. Uh, the toleration is actually four times the the what I call it the, the optimum value, which is two hundred and fifty milliseconds, and the toleration is actually one one second. Mm -hmm. So for 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 you one second is tolerable. So AppTex is a measurement of how how many uh, this is one hundred percent, so the, the one you get here. Uh, so how many how close it is to 100%. It's a user satisfaction thing, and yeah, there's a bit more reading. Uh, uh, if you cover this, uh, you'll be another talk as well. <laughs> so, uh, but go read about it. Very interesting because you what in real world everything happened. So, but uh, users are not exactly uh, bad. So they have a certain toleration. So this is the measurement of their toleration. So when you you don't you that is why we have uh, like uh, all these uh, time series analysis and stuff uh, statistical like kind of thing is uh, is because average doesn't make any sense average like in in the greater scheme of things uh. so metric type uh, for Prometheus I'm gonna do a quick cover counter is stuff that uh, monotonically increase you always increase so that uh, uh, but you 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 re, you'll be reset when your server restart. But uh, what counter used is we normally cal uh, use it to calculate the rate. It's not the how many users uh, at current moment. How many users at current moment is gauge. But the problem with gauge is going you go up and down. And if your scrape time is let's say one minute, if all the users are fulfilled within one minute, it will be zero all the time. So, but counter means that. You store the monotonicity because it's always increased, but you lose count of that, the visibility of that. You just see the increase, and from there 
your calculation will be just a rate, like how many users per minute, something like that. Summary is uh, basically like histogram. Histogram is actually, summary is a not so accuracy version of histogram, but it calculates very fast. So if you want to get uh, like just now those FTEX calculation <laughs> histogram, because this is a very, if you get it big, this can take seconds to calculate. So summary is a quick version of that. Histogram is uh, gonna store the sum, the count, and also the bucket. Bucket is the, you're gonna sort by the bucket of, let's say, uh, in response time, we'll be sorting in uh, 100 milliseconds, 250, 500, like all this bucket. Uh, because it doesn't make sense if you want to store all the floating numbers as one unit, right? It, it's very hard, hard to calculate. Yeah. So this is a very quick one into that. We are, because I'm supposed to do a quick one. <laughs> so let's go to the, this, this is a very interesting one. Uh, all, all business people like Grafana. <laughs> when I show the Grafana, regardless of what I'm showing them, they're gonna say, wow. <laughs> so Grafana is a free dashboard that hook on to, uh, supports a lot of uh, time series database. So what sort of database is supported? Uh, because I set up, so it supports all this, Elasticsearch, Open TSB, Stack Driver. Stack Driver is the log thing from Google. SQL Server, MySQL. So if your data is formatted as a time series like, why time series? There's a fee, there's a there's a there's a value, like like group columns like name or something, and there must always be a value associated with it, like one, two, three, uh, a numeric value. There's always a numeric value. So uh, this is my dashboard, Golang my demo. So, uh, so six six minute, six hour is too much. I'm gonna shorten it to thirty. So you can see like the percentile. And this can be real time or this is, is this real time? refresh. You can I can set it to be five seconds because it doesn't make sense because uh, when your query is big or database is big. Some of them are very expensive. Uh, it's uh, connecting directly to whatever. You pull, yeah. But five seconds is actually for demo, like you think. But you you should you shouldn't have it there refreshing every five seconds. Still, it doesn't work under production data. So yeah. So uptime, so I can see you can notice this. This is a uh, the heart shape, which actually have my alerts. So your, you can have a multiple plug. It's very slow because it's web. So, so it's very easy here. Like I can have a certain like alert when it has no value, then tell me that it's down. So like this is a total hash rate request. Then you should actually calculate the rate how many users and stuff. This is, uh, you see the percentile actually different. 100% is the, is the mean. Well, it doesn't represent anything, but, but random number, so. Uh, responses, this is also the responses. You can see like different percentile actually has different. So your, if, let's say your tolerance is 95 percentile, you see that, oh, that's how much I need to improve. Uh, if you want to go to 99%. But it shouldn't be like, it shouldn't be like blocking, like because if you get the mean, you say like, oh shit, this thing is too, mm -hmm. it's performing badly. You know, you waste a lot of effort doing things, but if you have the visibility of this, then you know that it's a freak incident, that it's not happening all the time, but you should investigate when you have the time or something like that. But you see 95%, let's say, or oh, we didn't, uh, let's say two, 240 is too much for me. So 95 is still within two, 240, so it's okay, something like that. So, and also the FTEX, everything can be here. You can have a alert system, play around with it. It's, uh, it's free and open source. Uh, it has a Docker container. I just take it from the web and just put, put it here. And for some system, they are exporter that, let's say if you use Redis, you have an exporter that directly export it and you can download the, the, the this view of holding directly. I have to use this on the, on the project. Yes. I set it up for you already. <laughs> I want not doing this because I'm forcing Swimming to do it. <laughs> oh, it's actually the. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. 
Uh, it's actually, uh, you see that I previously, I'm, I'm actually connected to that. Uh -huh. So you remember the commands that I had? Yeah. I actually need to fill up the command uh, exporter. So if you, for a lot of time, if you use Golang, it's good enough already. So you can know like what, what sort of uh, CPU on, and stuff. So because everything is slow, so I'm covering a lot of stuff. <laughs> So here, the commands, the query commands are the same that I put in into the that one. Yeah. So whatever works in Yeah. Yep. So see, it's something like this. That if I just now the query like the the percentile thing is the same. Oops. Very slow right now. Well, why did I lose? I I don't know why I lost this. Uh, but there's a playground as well. Uh, this playground is also, I prefer this over Prometheus. This is a new feature. Uh, it supports all sorts of uh, engine, including like if uh, InfluxDB, uh, Postgres and stuff, you can just use one for this. And it supports all these things like just now what I did. If I do a HTTP, let's say what sort of stuff I have, I can do this. Uh, request, let's say bucket. So you can say, oh, it doesn't make much sense. You you actually have to auto create adding it by making it into a histogram quantile. It has this suggestion. So see, it does. Oh wow, it's so magical. Yes, use this. <laughs> it's very magical. Uh, it's a new feature for Grafana as well. And I don't need to think about things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there are actually a lot of exporters. These are stuff that you can just hook into your, if you use any of these products, people actually wrote exporter means that they'll be exporting the internal workings, the stats into uh, Prometheus. So let's say like, say Nets, I use Nets, Kafka, you know that, those stats. And you can go to Grafana, go, go to their website, you can download their dashboard and uh, given the stats that is already provided. This is like the template. Template, yeah. yeah. So you can just use them and you, you scrape all those process and you get the details nicely. Yeah. Yeah. I cannot show you my production stuff because it's recorded. <laughs> yeah. 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 Afterwards. Yeah. Question? Oh. Any questions? Uh, that's, that's about it. A preview about metrics, uh, some Prometheus stuff. Uh, check it out. It doesn't work only with uh, Golang, Prometheus supports a lot of other languages as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Check them out. Very useful if you very very useful in impressing the salespeople. <laughs> uh, sometimes uh, when they ask for like certain stats and stuff, we just we just uh, because we always uh, have uh, metrics collected. So we just come up with a dashboard, we just throw it to them, they show it to the customer, everybody is happy. <laughs> Even though no, no, it's not like, uh, it's collector, it's real number, so. And this is how you, you keep yeah. doing the certification.